What is up you guys, it's Avery here, wanted to bring you guys a chain burn deck profile for the September 2017 TCG ban list. A lot of people have been requesting this, so I wanted to throw this up for you guys. And also, if you want to be a part of the notification squad, all you got to do is hit that ding dong notification bell. Be sure to be part of the Avery Army Nation and smack that like button so that I know where my notification squad at. And if you are first to comment and first to like, you too could be the notification bay of the day. Like I said, all you got to do is just take your hand, smack the like button, and uh, be part of that notification squad. And you too can prevent forest fires. So let's go ahead and get into this chamber deck profile. Like I said, a lot of people have been requesting this. And really not anything has really changed from the previous deck profile, which is why I was surprised that so many people were asking me for a updated deck list. But really, there's not really anything to change, just because of the fact that there are so many different ways that you can tackle chain burn, other than the world's build, because di because just dice jar is absolutely garbage, um, in my humble opinion. Um, from someone who's been playing Chamber for quite a while, I just, I don't think Dice Jar is all that good. I think it's just kind of more of a gimmicky card. Um, and most of the builds I'm seeing right now of Chamber are just, it's not even really Chamber. Like, they're not playing Accumulated Fortune. Uh, they're mostly just kind of playing, like, Secret Blast, Balance of Judgment, Chain Strike, and Card of Demise, and maybe Pot of Desires. Like, they're just playing a lot of those cards. It's not even really, like, Accumulate Fortune or anything. It's just, it's called Chain Burn because of Chain Strike. Like, that's really it. So, uh, there are, there really are many different ways that you can tackle this deck. This is just how I prefer to make Chain Burn. Me and my dad both feel like this is just the best optimal build for our play style. I personally feel that Card of Demise and Pot of Desires are just not very good in this particular build. I understand that Pot of Desires is a plus one. To other people, it is a minus nine. Um, however, I will admit that my stance has changed on Pot of Desires. I feel like it's a good card in the correct deck. I just feel that Chamberlain is not one of those decks, especially in this build because you want all of your resources. But if you're comfortable playing Card of Demise and Pot of Desires and Chamberlain, by all means, go for it. Just don't play Dice Jar because Dice Jar is trash. But let's go ahead and get into this deck profile. So we have two Lava Golem. We have two Card Card D. We have two Swiss Scarecrow and one Battle Fader. Um... This can be changed based upon your play style. Um, I've played two Lava Golem, I've played three, I've played one, I've, I've played a bunch of different ways. So it, especially with Suicide Scarecrow and Battle Fair, this all just kind of depends on uh, the format and what's going on. Like, I could probably up card card D to three just because Dryden isn't a thing anymore. And then we got the one One Day of Peace, three Pot of Duality, and two Chain Strike. Then we have three Wabaku, three Secret Blast, three Just Desserts, three Secret Barrel, two Ojama Trio, two Threatening Roar, three Reckless Greed, two Dimension Wall, two Balance of Judgment, one Ring of Destruction, and three Accumulated Fortune. Now I know people are going to give me hate for Ojama Trio and say it's not even all that good anymore. However, you have to keep in mind is that, yes, if they link someone with it, then you can just kind of Lava Golem it away, and then they have to make another Link monster. Um... And if they decide to synchro with the tokens and they place a synchro monster in their extra monster zone, then you can just use Lava Golem on monsters in their main monster zone. And that way, as long as you just don't take out the monster in the extra monster zone, they're pretty much locked off from their extra deck until they get rid of that monster. So it, it's kind of, uh, you know, it can be good and it cannot be good. So it just kind of depends on how you take it. Again, we're not playing Desires or Card of Demise in this build. I feel like it's just not all that good. Um, Secret Blast, I very much like, uh, along with Bad Luck Blast. For those of you who don't know what Secret Blast does, it's like Secret Barrel. Uh, you take 300, uh, inflict 300 damage to your opponent for each card they control. If this card on the field is destroyed by your opponent's card and sent to the graveyard, inflict 1,000 damage. And that's not once per turn. So let's say you have three Secret Blast set, your opponent draws, and they somehow wipe away your whole back row. You can just chain all three Secret Blasts, and then they'll take 3,000 damage on top of what they're already taking from each Secret Blast for the 300 damage. So it's, uh, it's, it's cute. It's definitely cute. Balance of Judgment, I've been back and forth on this card just because of the fact that it sometimes it's really good sometimes it's really bad it all just kind of depends on the situation i feel like that if you want to get the most out of this card you just have to set it and then just pass turn like that like this can be the only card on your board um so that's that um not really much else to say about that extra deck is just kind of whatever you want i just have 15 fusions in here for try and guess because normally i'll use try and guess in like game two or game three and try and guess isn't all that good anymore now that we have link monsters and all that but yeah so it's, it's gotten better, it's gotten worse. Um, the side deck, once again, can kind of be whatever you want it to be. I'll just kind of name it off here in case you guys want some ideas. we got one Meta Ion, one Max C, one Battle Fader, one Regeki, uh, one Dark Hole, two MST, one Scapegoat, one Legacy Ayata, one Ceasefire, one Try and Guess, one Blazing, one Jar, one Macro, and one Skill Drain. Again, this is just kind of a side deck of 
cards that you may want to throw in. I feel like Max C isn't all that good in Chamber, and I know I've seen other decks run Max C in the main deck. I just feel like Max C isn't all that good just because of the fact that if your opponent knows that you're playing Chamber and you Max C them, they're pretty much just going to let you break even on the Max C, if that. Um, and then they'll just kind of stop because they know that they're that you're not going to be aggressive with them. They can end on a suboptimal board or a really bad board for that matter, and they don't have to worry about you because you know in Spiral they could just, for all they care, just sit on a super agent and keep on poking you until they draw into outs because it really doesn't matter at that point uh, because they know that you can't lava a golem with just one monster and they know that you're not going to be super aggro with them. So. Anyways, I just wanted to bring you guys the Chamber and Deck Profile uh, before I get out of here, just to kind of show you some other, uh, just burn in general decks, um, other ideas to play the deck. Chain Energy is another good one, which I think Chain Energy Burn is, um, it's more underwhelming, I think, but at the same time, it's also a bit more unexpected because of the fact of Chain Energy. Uh, for those of you who don't know what it does, each player must pay 500 life points per card to Normal Summon, Special Summon, Set, or Activate cards from his or her respective hand. So... This is actually, in theory, very good in Trickstar because of the fact of, you know, let's say you have a Lyca Risk and a Candina on board. Every time the opponent goes to add a card to their hand, they're going to take 200. And then every time they activate a Spell or Trap, they're going to take 200. Plus, every time that they play a card from their hand, they're going to take an additional 500 from Chain Energy. So, just kind of something interesting to think about. Um, in Burn, it's pretty decent. Um, I don't really mess with that build too much just because it can be kind of hit or miss. This is just kind of another straight burn deck. Um, this is kind of a more older version with um, misfortunes and stuff like that. But this just kind of goes to show that you can, you know, optimize chain burn in whatever way you see fit. You know, you might think that my build is trash. You might think that, you know, maybe one of these other builds that I'm showing you here is a little bit better um, than, you know, say another burn build. It really just all depends on what your play style is. Like me, I don't like Desires or Carter Demise in here. I really don't feel like it gels well with the deck in my play style, so I just don't play it. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, please be sure to hit that like button. Be sure to hit that ding-dong notification bell. Don't worry, I'm not going to ask you to back me on Patreon because I don't have a Patreon. I'm not about that life. So thank you guys for watching and subscribe if you have not already.